Megan Olivia, Mark Ramondi here in Boston mm -hmm. for UFC 292. We haven't been back since 2019. And obviously, the first thing we have to talk about is the crowd. They have been fiending for the Octagon to return. It is back, and they showed up with the energy. I mean, every every seat it felt like that was available to be filled here for the press conference was indeed filled. They were loud from the moment that anyone walked out. They were big for Sean O'Malley. They were big in a different way for Aljamain Sterling, but tremendous crowd. Yeah, they were not fickle fans. They certainly had their favorites and they stuck with them throughout the press conference. In terms of this main event, <clears throat> excuse me, and the interaction between Sean and Aljo, what's the biggest takeaway? Is it exactly what you expected and kind of maybe what we saw in May as well? It, it was kind of, and, and Marab really came in and he was sitting the with jacket. the media wearing the jacket. I don't think it's the same jacket that Sean O'Malley was wearing. Back, uh, I don't think it's Sean's uh, jacket, Newark, but I think it's the same jacket. Same type of jacket. For, I'm not sure where you can get that. Do you know what? You're, you're a fashion. No, I don't uh, you're a fashionista. I feel like maybe you got it know. custom made. It's possible it could know. be custom made. <laughs> in, in any case, a lot of trash talk, a lot of intensity. Sterling was was very loud. He was standing up at times. He was. Uh, I think one time he took off his shirt and he showed his abs. I mean, uh, I might have took off his shirt too. There was a lot of shirt losing. Yeah, yeah. It was. A, it was. A, it was a pretty entertaining press conference. I have, to, I have to say. It was, and there was hostility as well. Um, Ian Gary really um, adamant that he was mm. not going to let Neil Magny speak. He said he took uh, offense to things that he said yesterday in his own media scrums, and then every time Neil Magny tried to talk, he spoke over him. N Neil Magny said something at media day on Wednesday that he, like something about Ian Gary is a young guy and I'm gonna I'm gonna like whoop him like like a kid and Ian Gary took that I guess quite literally and said how dare you the entire press conference he said how dare you you know put your hands on a child and I'm not really sure Neil Magny was being literal with that trash talk because right. it's, it's fight trash talk you know people say a lot of stuff you know we yep. all know uh, I'm not sure if it was literal or not but in, in any case Ian Gary took it very seriously, and that was the theme of his press conference, and it, it was, he was, uh, yeah, he was, like, angry about it. Yeah, he certainly was. His own child was actually in the stands. I mm -hmm. saw him with his wife, Layla. I saw him sort of waving to him before the face-offs. But I want to talk about the co-main event, too, because I feel like maybe there hasn't been as much attention on it. But today, there were quite a few questions for both women, and a, a big theme was like water for Whaley. Hmm. That she said, I've been embracing this Bruce Lee concept. She's been, she told us she's been reading a lot of different books about it. I mean, this has the potential to end early, scheduled for five, but these two women are both finishers. 100%. I mean, women's strawweight is not a division that's necessarily known for finishers, and definitely not known for knockouts, but these two women are capable of that. Lamos is probably the hardest hitter that Zhang Weili has fought since Jessica Andrade, and I think Jessica Andrade has even said in interviews yeah. that Lemos is someone that hits harder than Zhang, and she could she could knock Zhang out. It's it's a fascinating fight for that reason, and the the be like water thing is like, you know, Zhang Weili can't get roped into a brawl here. You know, you get roped into a brawl and you get caught. She, she is someone that has taken shots. You know, Yuani and Jay check uh, hit her a lot. Yep. Rose Namajunas can hit her. She can be hit, and Lemos can hit hard. It's a really interesting dynamic in that fight. I know Lemos is the underdog, but could be a live underdog. Yeah. I want to talk quickly about the this card at times had fights fall through, and there's mm. always been someone to step up, but Damone Blackshear, this is, a, this is a big moment for him. He had the twister finish on Saturday night in the Apex, and then here he is on a pay-per-view stepping up. He said, I was at sushi dinner, I saw Cody Garbrandt fell out, and I wanted that opportunity. What can you say about a guy doing something like that on seven days notice i mean it's i just can't even imagine you know i'm i mean i'm after one fight week i'm tired of not even fighting and he's gonna come back and do it again in a different city across the country by the way you know on the east coast he just won by a spectacular finish and, and now he has a chance to do it again and that's the kind of thing that people remember like he can put his and that's probably why he did it megan like you know the, people remember stuff like that, those types of feats in this sport. And if he can pull off something crazy against Mario Bautista on Saturday, looking at a, you know, a future legend possibly. Well, and he also said he thinks the matchup is favorable. So, you know, kill two birds with one stone, hey, get on a page, make history and win a fight because you see the potential to be able to do that. Um, of course, we we had Pedro Munoz step in mm -hmm. as well for this fight. He had a, a lot more notice to face Chido Vera. But before I, I wrap this up, Chris Weidman. I'm glad you asked me about Chris Weidman yeah. because, come on. Chris Weidman. Chris Weidman. I told him in our fighter meetings that we're probably all going to have tears in our eyes because what a story. And he didn't just come back from an injury. He came back from injuries and setbacks and infections. And at one point was told he wouldn't even be able to walk again. And, 
I mean, he wouldn't be able to wrestle with his children and play with his kids, walk with his wife. He's not just returning. He's returning to competition, and he believes in the best shape yet. He told me when we spoke in media day that he feels like he's in his prime, that the, the injury was just adversity for his next run of the title. And I really feel like he believes that. And, man, Chris Weidman is just someone that's been a class act. He's been, he's been yes. doing this for a long time. He won the title 10 years ago. You know, he beat Anderson Silva 10 years ago, was the UFC middleweight champion, and he believes that he's on his way back there. And, you know, what can you say about Chris Weidman? But I, I will say one thing. He wasn't happy about being on the prelims, Megan. He was pretty annoyed about being on the prelims on Saturday. I did hear those complaints. But, you know, it's a big platform, more eyes on the Weidman. More eyes on the prelims, exactly. right? More eyes on exactly. the prelims. That's what I told them. But, hey. I get it, though. He's chip on his shoulder. You know, he's intense. He's going into the fight. I get it. Listen, he can't be happy about every single he's thing. He's from Long Island. He's got to pick something. He's from Long Island. You know, you got to have a little chip on your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, this is Thursday, and it was a crazy day here in Boston. Saturday night, of course, the fights are coming to you live. We will see you for UFC 292 and all the coverage you need. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.